What up, everybody? How are we feeling tonight? Sonico, the one time you come on the platform with me and we sit next to each other, they give you that kind of remark and response. Listen, you know, it is what it is. How are you feeling tonight, everybody? That is what I like to hear. We're going to hop right into it because we're going to, you know, dismiss in a minute. We really want to get this series uh, of connect groups as we're doing in the cage with the men and we're doing hurdles with the ladies. We want to get that going. Uh, we want to complete it. There's some great stuff in there. I, I think it's the one this week or next week that the guys are like really going to get into some real truthful stuff that you're not used to hearing on, uh, from a pastor, but I'm excited for it. But last week we came on the platform right before we dismissed and I looked at Nico and said, hey, we need to do, we need to talk about your testimony and uh, we just thought we would do it this week. So before we get into it, we're gonna take like 10, 15 minutes just to talk about the story behind the man that you see all the time. You know, since I get to preach often, you get to hear my story, but you don't always get to hear the stories of the people that are serving all the time. And I'm telling you right now, the story you're about to hear, it really is a modern day Bible story if you ask me. Um, I'm not gonna get into it. Uh, he's gonna get into it, but we're gonna talk about it. But let's just pray real quick. Nico, you wanna greet everybody before we pray? Hi. I mean, I already said what's up before, so it's like, how many times can you say what's up, right? You know, I complimented some people. Did, any, did everyone else compliment people? You know, that's what you're supposed to do, go around and say, oh, my God, you got look really good. nice shoes. Yeah. Smell good. Yeah, yeah, I did it, right? Ish. Really nice shoes. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, <laughs> we thank you for laughter in your church. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. We pray that for the rest of the night, you would speak to every single person. We may be talking about our experiences and whatnot, but you're still going to communicate what you have for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. So, Nico, why don't you tell everyone in the room a little bit about yourself. You're now engaged to Sabrina Lilo yes. Roselle. Yes, uh, it's, it's Lilu. She would want me to correct you. It's Lilu? It's Lilu. She, I, I know she was kind of giving me the look like it's not Lilu, it's Lilu. Wow. So, I got you. Do you guys remember when I first, like, announced my engagement to me and Rochelle kind of had that one moment, and I was like, that was my fiancé, and she, remember that? I do. That was like, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, right was, here, oh my God, hey, it was so great. Look at that. There was like, remember she dropped her water bottle? Uh-huh. Remember that? The whole ding. It was the loud ding. No, no, no. Nope. No, no, no. We had some, no, there was something very similar. I promise you, I promise you, because I went home saying I had my moment, and I remember this entirely. <laughs> Nico, why don't you tell everyone in the room a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, where do I begin? So, um, God, wait, I was on. born. No, that, that specific idea was Connor Roxana. No, but we had something separate. Continue. Okay, so I guess I'll skip when I was born. Just kidding. Um, well, I guess I'll just kind of start where I'm at right now. I'm Nico, last name Gonzalez. I tell people I'm Puerto Rican because I'm Swedish and Puerto Rican, not because I'm sweet and Puerto Rican. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so I currently work at FIU. I play football there. Um, I'm studying to get a master's in global affairs with a focus in globalization and security. And really, just to give you, I, I guess, a, a, a sh short little piece of my life, or not a piece, but really just everything consolidated into one thing, is I just played football for a large majority of my life. I loved it. And quite frankly, it's how I really have learned to uh, be me. I've learned so many things from football that I'm so grateful for. Um, and it's funny that I'm mentioning this because I, I had just grown out of the Nico, the football player, you know, thing, but now I'm bringing it back because of me. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my entire life was really dedicated to football. Um, and I started coming to Metro Life Church. Well, football is how we connected. Yes, actually. Football was how we connected. So you don't fully remember <laughs> this, but there was a couple of guys from FIU coming around and. And we started just talking about how we were going to continue to minister to the football team over there. And so one of the guys, one of the quarterbacks, actually would take me over to, like, watch practices. While I would watch practices, I'd sometimes go into the locker room. They would connect me with a couple of guys. And one of those guys, one of those times, was Nico. He had a much longer hair at the time. Anyone who was here remembers the hair. And uh, it, was, it was great, but that's how we, con we connected. But then at some point, uh, I don't remember the exact order, but at some point you accepted an invite to Metro. Was that before or after the invite to the Bible study? That was actually after um, because we did Bible studies on campus. If anyone's familiar with FIU, uh, we went to PG5, and we even did it actually right by the Taco Panda Bell Express. and Panda Express. Um, and we would Lord just have Bible Jesus. studies there. 
Yeah, we would just have Bible studies there. And so, that, so I, that happened before I came to Metro Life. So that happened before, which is really crazy because it started as this, this young adult pastor walking into a room full of D1 football players saying, hey, let's have Bible study. If you would have asked me at any point in my life if I was going to be that type of pastor, I would have told you no. I, I thought I'd be walking in saying, can I be one of you guys? Like, can just make me like, the, I want to have fun here. But we started this Bible study and you showed up to one of those Bible studies and literally all we would do, there was like eight or nine of us, all we would, there were some characters in that eight or nine. <laughs> yeah, there was. I mean, I was one of those characters. You were too. one of those uh, yeah, characters. Hey, let's, let's relax though. Yeah, but <laughs> I remember all we would literally do, and part of this was because I literally didn't have time for much else. I couldn't really prep anything. So we would bring the Bible and I would kind of bring a couple of extras if I had them and some of the guys would bring some of theirs and we would just, hey, read John chapter one, John chapter two, whatever it was, and then we would discuss it. Yeah. And man, we heard some crazy things around that table, like things that some of the guys thought the Bible or the story meant, and we would just continue to talk about it. Now, I would have never thought that the fruit of one of those conversations would be the young adult director who oversees everything, now engaged, getting ready to get married. But here there is a, a crazy story from that moment to this one. So why don't you tell us about some of the in-between? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, uh, just to stress the point about connect groups, and I don't, I, I was totally new to this, and it was just, hey guys, I have a Bible, let's read this chapter, and you know, we'll talk about it. If any of you ever want to lead a connect group, that's all you have to do. And you just talk about the Bible, and you just learn together. So anyways, um, <laughs> So that happened. We, we had those Bible studies, but, you know, I'd kind of go on and off. Um, and there was a point in time where I had begun to room with one of the players that would come to Metro Life consistently. And there was one day they were all getting ready, you know, all my roommates. And I was like, oh, hey, you know, where are you guys going? And they were like, oh, we're going to church. And I was like, ah, okay. And I was like, ah. They were like, oh, you want to come? And I was like, ah, sure, what the <laughs> heck. Saw them getting dressed. And, you know, I just got dressed. And... Uh, we ended up coming to, to Monday night. That's when we had it over in the LC. And I tell people, ever since that day, I did not stop coming. And it's pretty remarkable how, you know, you don't, you don't realize that the importance of that day until it's like hindsight, you know, until it's three, four, five years down the road. And you look back and you're like, wow, I, I came every time after that. And so I just dedicated myself to... Um, you know, coming to church, and, and realistically, we talk about relationships all the time, and that's really what it was for me. You know, it was a place where I can make, uh, you know, build genuine relationships with people who, you know, wanted the same thing. You know, people were looking to God for answers and looking to God for, um, you know, just how to do life. And so the more and more I came, the more I began to bond with several people in church, and, and Pastor Chris kind of, you know, took me under his wing, and you know, he, I, I talk about it all the time, but he's played such a significant role in my life. And it just goes to show um, the importance of relationships. Um, and so, you know, I, I guess in terms of ministry, I served over in uh, young adults, or excuse me, uh, youth. Um, and then... Here comes this burly football player coming to serve in the youth group. Like, Nico's not one of those guys who had, like, church experience and then, like, kind of fell away. Like, when he was coming to church for the first time, he's like, this is kind of like brand new for me and yet within like a year and a half of that he was like serving youth talking to kids yeah it was the weirdest thing I'll be honest it was the weirdest thing because I just came and it was like you come and, and you serve like that's just what you do so I was like <laughs> all right like that's what I'm doing then I'm coming and I'm serving and I literally served every Wednesday or at the time it was a Friday I think at the time it was a Friday or maybe not I don't know yeah, well, anyway good well the thing that really really made the shift though um and here's what's crazy you know a lot of people look at me see a pastor think that I understand and believe every aspect of anything you've ever heard about Christianity. But as much as Nico says, you know, I played a significant role, he's played a significant role in my life too because literally watching his conversion, watching him go from a guy who really didn't understand or believe at all to a guy who was like really asking to get baptized. I, as a young developing leader, didn't understand the value of baptism really until I watched him get baptized. And there was like, I, I say it to this day, that if, if, if there was ever a time where I remember 
Somebody went into the water and somebody else came out. It was with Nico. I remember seeing that. And so, Nico, real quickly, like, tell us about that part of your story. It was when the stage was over there, mm -hmm. and it was not in the beautiful, you know, uh, yeah. thing we have out there. It wasn't no. in the ocean. It's a nice big blue bucket. <laughs> it was a bit indoor <laughs> big blue bucket. But tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I'll never forget. I was in class. I was taking one of the hardest classes of my life, honestly. And I knew I was going to be late to church, and they were doing baptisms before kind of the, the service began. Yeah, it was a Wednesday, like, worship night, I think, or something like that. And, um, you know, they were doing the, the baptisms before every, everything got started, sort of. And I texted Chris, and I was like, hey, man, you know, I don't think I can make it for the baptism. I'll still come late, but, you know, I, I won't be able to be there to get baptized because he knew that I wanted to come and get baptized. <clears throat> and so he was like, listen, man, don't worry about it. We'll get you baptized, you know, after, like, no big deal. So I came, we, you know, the night progressed, and uh, when I showed up, they kind of, immediately they were like, all right, you know, there's, there's one other person that we haven't baptized yet, and they did the whole introduction and stuff. Um, but for me personally, um, it was really something that I really wanted to commit myself to because for a while I had been much like, you know, everybody who is born again, quite frankly. And, you know, it was this one foot in, one foot out kind of, kind of person, kind of individual um, but I really felt God tugging on my heart, and, and you know, it's just incredible to, to feel that when I never had felt that before. And so I just knew I had to do something about it. And it was in that moment when I got baptized, I, I, always, I always say it's the, 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 my year of my 20th, my 20th year is when my life shifted and went completely 180. Um, and it was at that baptism where, like you said, I went in one person and came out another. Um, and it was, it was just really great. You know, my friends were there to help support me and, and uh, you know, celebrate me. And, and from that moment forward, I told myself, I said, Neek, you're here because of God. And so because of that simple truth, there's no reason why you shouldn't be living a life for God. Like... If it weren't for God, I would literally not be here. And so I'm going to do everything he tells me because, are you kidding? Mm. You know, and that's just how it struck me. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this one foot in, one foot out. I'm making a choice. I'm following Jesus. And boy, the fruits. The fruits. The fruits. Well, I'm glad you said that, the, the fruits, because as we bring this thing to a close, I, I don't think we could really tell your whole story uh, fr from this, you know, perspective. Part of it's going to have to be through relationship. The people get to know you, and as they get to know you, they see what God has done. And, I mean, I remember the conversation. We were going to get tacos down south. It was you, me, and one of those characters, you know? Yeah. And we were just, uh, you know, you probably wouldn't expect a pastor to be in the middle of that car. I, I wouldn't have expected that the future young adult director was in that car. Mm -hmm. It was like, look what the Lord has freaking done. But we sat there, we drove down. I did everything in my power to be like, I'm going to make it seem like I'm one of those cool guys. Like, you could curse in front of me. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah, that was going to oh be my man, thing. That was it. <laughs> I, I, that was the first time, actually, you put me on, John Mayer. And I was like, yo. That was the what first baptism. And then later on, that was, that was very uh, blasphemed. But, <laughs> but, you know, Nico, you, you use the term fruit. And uh, we've been doing connect groups for the last couple of weeks. And we say, you know, you, that you got baptized. We, we talked about how it started in a connect group. You know, we talk about tithing. We do all of these things, and it just seems like that's just the church stuff. And a lot of people really come, especially on Mondays, they come to kind of just hear the message. They continue to go and live their life the way that they've lived it. The way that they've changed it now is they come here and they receive here. Uh, and that's great because the Bible says that faith comes through hearing. So people that want to come to the church to hear, that's great. But the Bible also says faith without works is dead. And that there comes a day where just the church stuff has to become stuff that we do actively. You see, I have to be honest with you. Nico probably doesn't remember many sermons that I've preached in the four or five years he's been coming around. I guarantee you if you were to ask my wife who's been here eight years some of the messages that I've preached, she probably wouldn't remember many. If you ask me what are some of the messages that you've preached, I probably wouldn't remember many, but every one of us remembers people 
that have really, really, really shown us they care for us. Every one of us remembers the conversations, the one-on-one moments, the relationships that we build. Those are the things that really change the course of our life. I have my Pastor Chris. I, I have the guy who has poured into me at an individual level and helped me be who I am today. And you seem to have that guy, but there's a lot else too. You've got guys like Robbie constantly um, continuing that the iron is sharpening in both of you. You have guys like Gabe and Johnny, guys that come alongside of you. So it's really relationship. And so listen, I understand that going into connect groups on a Monday night is a big shift from the big services where we come and we preach big messages. But I personally felt like it was time to put our money where our mouth is. And what I mean by that is, I can't, I understand we could build crowds off of sermons because faith comes through hearing. And then we can attract plenty of people who want to build their faith by constantly talking. But I know there's not a lot of life change there. And you know what? If there's not a lot of life change, that means even the the works that we're doing here are kind of dead too. Because if it's not inspiring life change, if it's not inspiring baptisms, if it's not inspiring us to say, Man, my life, like you said, that 180, then what are we doing? Why are we here? Y'all can hear way better preachers than me on the, on, on the internet. So that's why we've kind of hit the, the rework button and said, let's get into connect groups. Let's, let's actually take time to make sure that people who are coming alone for one, two, or three weeks don't come alone for four, five, six, seven weeks. They meet with people. They connect with other people. Because I'm telling you right now, I have been in church 29 years. I think I remember three or four sermons. And I'm a preacher. Sermons give you the little bit of gas that you need to keep going. But relationships, they become the bumpers on your bowling alley that they just keep you in place. They keep you moving forward. They keep you aiming towards the target. And so that's why we've taken this time. It's not even really about this series that we're doing. It's about getting around five or six people continually. I don't think when COVID hit, one person missed hearing sermons. Everybody missed hearing from other people. So that's why we've kind of taken a sharp turn the last couple of weeks, and we're going to keep going at it. Because I'm telling you, the best this place has to offer you is the relationships. The best thing Metro Life Church has to offer all of you are the relationships. Nico, I've told you this before, man. The best thing that I have to offer you is the relationship. Yes, it's a pastoral relationship. We have a friendship. We've both worked through that many times. You've been amazing at it. You really, really have. You've made it easy for me. But the best thing that I can offer you is the relationship. It's the times that we go to coffee and we walk through the seasons that you're walking through. That's the best thing I have to offer you. And the best thing you have to offer some of the people in the room is the exact same. You know, it's, it's not, wow, I read the Bible and look what the Lord showed me. Because I don't think either of us remember the passage we read that day. And our first connect group. That's true. Especially me. My memory is just crazy. <laughs> yeah, but Doesn't you blame work. all the hits you took to the head. I do. I do. <laughs> you, give me, you give me some heat for that, but, you know. Yeah, because I don't believe that. I, I, don't, I think that's all a bit of a sham. But it's okay. You're the one who actually did it, not me. Um, but it's the relationship. We're still here. We don't remember the message, but we're still here doing life together. And I'm just praying that each and every one of you start to really see the value of relationship. And not just the relationship that brought you to Metro. Because you know what's crazy? The people that brought Nico to Metro don't come anymore. Some had to move away. Some decided it wasn't best for them. Some left the faith. But you never know the bridge that the person who brought you might be. Because somebody was a bridge to get Nico here. And that bridge brought Sabrina, her husband. So I just want you all to know, these relationships, the relationships, it's the best thing that this church has to offer you. So we're going to be intentional about it. You want to say anything else before we dismiss? I think you said a lot. I I just, going back really quick, I know we're supposed to dismiss, so forgive me, but I just wanted to highlight that, um, number one, Connect Groups is literally where I have the most fond memories and where I was built up the most in my faith. I mean, I'll never forget, I mean, truth be told, I remember more of what we talked about in Connect Groups than what you have said on the stage. Um, So that's number one, but number two, uh, just talking about salvation in general and my salvation walk, uh, I believe that it's, it's uh, kind of like a two-step process. You have the salvation of the baptism, 
And then you have the continual salvation in which you walk out your faith on a daily basis. And I think it's important to highlight that because uh, when I got baptized, you know, it wasn't just that's it, I'm saved. This is my salvation moment and life was easy. That's not the case. In fact, when the enemy saw that I got baptized, he said, hold on, let me get up off my seat because Nico just got baptized. Let me do something about that. And so it was a continual process and a hard process at that to, to continue to walk out my salvation. So, you know, if, if you ever find yourself in that position and you feel like, you know, you're being attacked heavily, it's because there's a very bright light on you. Um, so I would just encourage you to almost accept those, those times of trials and, and tribulations where, you know, you feel down and out or discouraged and, and moments where you just don't feel like you got enough and you ask, start asking God, like, are you real? Is this true? Those are the times where, you know, the, the testing of your faith tru truly does produce that perseverance. That was great, Nico.